So let's talk a little bit about square root of negative one. Um, and let's figure out what it what it might mean. Um, you remember this is asking, square root is asking what times itself gives me that value. So I, I, I want to know what times itself would give me negative one. And if I try uh, negative one, it doesn't work. Negative one times negative one is positive one, not negative one. Um, and if I try one, one times one is positive one. It doesn't work as well. Um, shoot. Okay, so let me uh, let me try it on my calculator then. So square root of negative one. Um, square root of negative one. I get something that says non-real answer. So there's no real number that if I uh, if I were to if uh, if I were to square it, it would give me negative one. Right? Square root of negative one. No real answer. But there is an answer. Let's let's deal with this thing. So negative one. We're going to define it again. What we're looking for is the thing that if you multiply it by itself, it gives you negative one. So whatever this thing is, if I take that thing and square it, it will give me negative one. That's kind of by definition, but what I'm looking for from that square root. And so if uh, square root of negative one is defined as the imaginary unit, uh, we use I. Um, yeah, no, uh, no, no, just I. So it's, it's I. Um, and that means that I squared is negative one. So if I think about that on my, on my calculator, non-real answer, at least with my, with my TI-83, if I go into mode, I notice that I have down here, it says real and A plus BI. So if I look over here and I change this into A plus BI, it has an, an I in it. I was set in real, so I was only dealing with real numbers, but now I want to be able to handle what's called imaginary numbers as well. And so now if I go square root of negative one, it actually spits out I, that imaginary unit. It's I. Oh boy. Yeah, funny. Okay. Um, so we are going to define I as that. I is a number. Um, it's called an imaginary number. It's an unfortunate name, but it is a number. And so I is the square root of negative uh, square root of negative one. That's what I equals. So I squared equals negative one, which is pretty amazing. Um, let me deal with something like the square root of negative twenty-five. Well, I can think of the square root of negative twenty-five as two pieces: the square root of negative one times the square root of twenty-five. And I know what the square root of twenty-five is. It's five, and the square root of negative one is is just uh it's just i stop um so five times i we write that as five i so what i'm saying is i have five imaginary units notice if i were to square that uh five i squared that would be five i times five i five times five is 25 i times i is i squared i squared is negative one Negative 25. Yeah. So there is, uh, there's what I is. It is a number, and it is the number that is the value of the square root of negative 1. So it's called imaginary. Uh, that's kind of dates back to how uncomfortable mathematicians were at the time when they were using this to, uh, to calculate with. But we will we'll deal with it. Uh, square root of negative 36. Square root of negative 100. What do you think? Well, square root of 36 is 6. Square root of negative 1 is i. 6i. Six, 6 imaginary units. Square root of negative 100. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of negative 1 is i. 10i. And thinking back to this relationship and this relationship will help you hold on to everything. So now we have this new kind of type of number we could deal with. Um, I wonder if I went 6i plus 10i what that would be. Well, I have six of these imaginary units, and I'm adding ten of these imaginary units, um, and it, this is pretty intuitive. There would be 16 i's now, six of them plus ten of them. Or I could subtract, you know, 7i minus 10i. If I have seven of them, I take away ten of them, I've got negative three i's. So negative three imaginary units. Negative three of these square roots of negative ones, if that's like 
uh, that your value that you're keeping track of. So I can add these together pretty easily um, and I can subtract them. Let's do a little bit of multiplication too. Before we do, we know that i squared is negative 1. Cool. So let's think about what i cubed would be. i cubed. Well, that is i squared times i, right? Three of them multiplied together. We already know that i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times i is negative i. Yeah, let's do it again. i to the fourth. Um, that would be i squared times i squared. That's i to the fourth. Um, i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Yeah, cool. i to the fifth. i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i. i to the fourth is 1. 1 times i is i. So it's i. And notice what happens is we start to kind of start over again, like i to the first is i. Each time we're going up here, we're multiplying by i again. So i to the fifth times i would be um, i to the sixth, which is this times i, oop, negative one. And we start to cycle around again and again. And what I'd like you to do is start to notice that there's some sort of pattern going on here when it starts to cycle and how you could use that cycling to um, to get at something like i to the 53rd. How would you evaluate that? Do some multiplying with that in mind. So if I had something like 6i multiplied by 3i, notice these things are all multiplied together. Uh, 6 times i times 3 times i. So 6 times 3 I could rewrite everything as 6 times 3 times i times i. 6 times 3 is 18. i times i is i squared. But I know that i squared is negative 1, so it is negative 18. Or how about if I had something like negative 5i times 7i? Well, let's do this a piece at a time. Negative 5 times 7, negative 35. i times i is i squared. So this would be negative 35. i squared is negative 1. So positive 35. Now, um, we're just dealing with these imaginary numbers. We can actually start to combine them up with um, a real component as well. And what we can have will be what's called a complex number. So something like 5 plus 7i. Now notice I'm, I can't combine those because 5, this is counting ones. This is telling you how many ones you have. And this 7 is telling you how many i's you have or how many square root of negative ones you have. They're like different units. Um, so 5 plus 7i. Um, complex numbers come in the form a plus bi. They have a real part and an imaginary part. And um, either one of those could be 0. So like a could be 0. So, so 6i is still a complex number. Or even 8. 8 plus 0i is still a complex number. So 5 plus 7i, let's say I added that to something like 10 minus 8i. I'm adding uh, this complex number here to that complex number there. Well, I can put the, the ones together. I have 5 ones and 10 ones, so I have 15 ones all together. And then I can put the i's together. I have 7i's minus 8i's. That'd be minus 1i. Or if I had something like uh, 3 plus 9i plus 18 plus 30i. Same idea. Uh, 3 plus 18, throw my 1's together. 8, 9, 10, 11, 21. Uh, 9i plus 30i, 39i. So I can add these together pretty easily. I also want to multiply uh, complex numbers that have both the real and imaginary parts together. So something like 3 plus 2i times 5 minus 2i. Now, I have a couple parts here. You, you might think, like if this was like 3 plus 2x times 5 minus 2x, you know how to multiply that together. You just uh, distribute the 3 to both pieces, distribute the 2x to both pieces, combine like terms. Same idea here. So uh, 3 times 5 is, is 15. 3 times negative 2i. Well, I have 3 times negative 2, that's negative 6i. 
2i times 5, that would be 2 times 5 is 10, 10 of these i's. And then 2i minus, uh, 2i times negative 2i, that's going to be a negative 4, but the i is squared, i times i. So this 15, negative 6i plus 10i, that would be 4i. And now let me deal with this part right here. This is negative 4 times i squared. i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 4 times negative 1. So it's positive 4. Plus 4, 19 plus 4i. So that's a pretty quick introduction to, uh, to imaginary numbers, uh, you know, particularly the ones that use, um, not particularly, uh, just imaginary numbers, things that use i. Yeah, I had to do it. I had to do it one more time. Um, and ways to add them together and multiply them together. And let me emphasize on your on your calculator, if if you put yourself into this complex mode, A plus BI, um, for the practice, I want you to do it by hand. But why don't you check your answers? For example, if I wanted to go 5 plus uh, 2i, notice I have i on the board right here above decimal. So I'm going to go second that. And I'm going to multiply that by 3 minus 4i. Ba -ba -ba -boo. 23 minus 14i. I can check my answers that way. Again, do that practice by hand. It's good practice to have, at least at first. Know that you can always check your answers on your calculator.